tonight on Catalyst. Bill Gates got into the office, now he's trying to get to the lounge room. And this is how he's going to get there. There's a new world coming. A cyber world with over one million players. People will be connecting from all over the world by their Xboxes. A world where you can live a fantasy existence 24 hours a day. So in these kind of worlds, you can be the wizard, you can be the warrior, you can do things you wouldn't ordinarily do. And it's being designed right here in Australia. It's like having the most awesome Lego toy you could possibly imagine. The people who will use it are here too. If they win this, they'll win 7-5. They're both fighting to be part of a billion dollar industry called Massive Multiplayer Games. If we lose, we're out. So it's do or die. Hello, welcome to Catalyst. I'm Karina Kelly. Tonight we're taking you into a world that most Australians don't even know exists. It's a virtual world where hundreds of thousands of people from all over the planet can meet to play, fight and love, all of them connected by the internet. Our report, Brave New Game, follows a team of Australian designers and a team of players as they both fight to stake their claim in the next generation of computer games. Imagine a future world where you live a double life. You enter a vast parallel cyber world running 24 hours a day with its own weather systems, cities and clans. Where you can be the warrior, adventurer or lover of your dreams. This world is coming soon to your home and it could change the way you think, live, and play. Hang back, hang back! All of a sudden, the world of video and computer games is bigger than Hollywood. As television, the internet and electronic games converge, Sony and now Microsoft are spending billions to capture these young minds. Here at Darling Harbour in Sydney, young Australians are fighting for a place at the World Cyber Games in Korea. Yes, come on, keep it off! The winners will compete against 44 countries for half a million dollars in prize money. Well done to I -Corp. The victors are a team called i -Corp. Aged from 16, their conquest has opened a whole new world. Have you ever been to anything outside of Australia besides New Zealand? It's going to be exhilarating. It's always exhilarating winning, but it's going to be great in Korea. We just want to have a fun time. Oh, is that for me? Happy birthday to you. Happy Across town, another group is also celebrating. Happy birthday, Software giant Microsoft has chosen this team to build a showcase game. It's part of Bill Gates' strategy to launch Microsoft into the world of online entertainment. We're building history. We're, gonna, we're hopefully going to be the first massive multiplayer game on a console. The potential is just enormous. And we can truly become a key ace in Microsoft, you know, battle of getting into you know, the lounge room, basically. I mean, obviously, as you know, Bill Gates got into the office and now he's trying to get to the lounge room. And this is how he's going to get there. Let's have some cake. That's right. What do you reckon? Yeah! The Australian players and the game developers may be celebrating, but the battle has just begun. And both teams have just weeks to prove themselves to the world. So have you guys actually had a chance to have a look at the build at all? Uh, I've run through it um, a couple... Uh, I've, well, kind of, I keep getting my, my butt kicked. Steve Wang and Paul McInnes are two of the team leaders at Microforte in Sydney. They're on the phone to their masters at Microsoft in Seattle, and the pressure is on. They've been given just a fortnight to put together a demonstration of their new game for a world press launch. Um, 
given that we have a really short time frame to the announcement, um, I think everyone here is just itching to get back in and start polishing and adding things. So. Microforte has to convince a sceptical world gaming media that their game, Citizen Zero, is the next big thing. They've already spent three years and millions of dollars creating unique software called Big World. It could allow millions of people to connect on the internet in the one game at the same time. It's a massively multiplayer online game. We create a virtual world and, and hundreds of thousands of players can log in, meet each other, go on missions and adventures together. And people will be connecting from all over the world via their Xboxes to play the game. So in these kinds of worlds you can be the wizard, you can be the warrior, you can do things you wouldn't ordinarily do, not just in terms of going on the computer to, to kill a monster. What's something that is accessible to a 14-year-old or uh, someone who's not particularly interested in video games? The real term is visceral. It's right in your face. If something looks like it hurts, it hurts. Uh, if it looks dangerous, it's dangerous. The game is designed to last for years. Okay. Subscribers paying a minimum of $20 a month. A vast, dedicated global community immersed in this world for hours every day. The concept of multiplayer gaming has already taken hold. Who's in water? Small teams are connecting on the internet or in gaming cafes. The popular Counter-Strike clocks up 3.3 billion minutes of playtime every month. And today's gamers are just the tip of a cyber iceberg. It feels good, but sometimes when you wake, like if I stay up all night playing, when you wake up in the morning and you walk outside, it hurts your eyes. And I don't like that. Three, four hours a day. That's including study for my HSC. That's coming up. I like strategy games where you get to build stuff and kill the other person or just kill anyone. You just get like in a rush. Organised teams called clans now compete internationally. For Australian clan ICOR, the World Cyber Games in Korea will be their first exposure to the emerging world of professional gaming. In Germany and Korea, they're paid to play games. They've got salaries, they've got lots of things. They've got a house where they can, like, I don't know, get together, play computer games, and they get around 50 grand a year. The uh, clans overseas have been together for a lot longer than us and practice very hard. They just had a major competition which they've been playing for the last six weeks. And our chances are good for our group and we expect to come top five, hopefully. At the moment we need a lot of practice. All of us need a lot of practice to get there, to get a good position there. <laughs> and we're going to put it in, we're going to try our best to win. Are we ready to start? What's the first clan they're going to sponsor? Eichel's early success means for the first time they have a manager and even a contract. Basically, you're on a yearly contract regarding products, but a monthly one regarding travel. Like, this is the first time they're sponsoring a clan. You know, they're, they're a bit worried of what, how well you do. So if you guys practice a lot and um, do well in Korea, then you look at more. You are lucky because you have only one hour difference, you know, with Korea. We got jet lag. Even if we get there, we'll have like a day of recovery. <laughs> the only thing is, um, after the first day, yeah. you will not have time for make train. It will be fun. Yeah. It will be fun. With ten days to their launch deadline, there's a lot at stake for Microforte. They've assembled a creative team of 40 for their most ambitious project. They claim to have the edge on the rest of the world with their big world technology but still have to prove its potential. One of the things that the big world technology does really well is handle huge amounts of people. Most of the current engines that are around today can handle a couple of thousand people on one server. And we thought, well, that's good. 
but it's not really what we wanted to get to. We really want to get to millions of people. Citizen Zero will create a virtual world of up to 100 square kilometres with a vast number of players, each with their own alias. It's a world where hundreds of people could gather for a wedding or an online battle. So the technical challenges are immense. We have uh, a massive amount of world to create. We're talking cities, towns, bars, nightclubs, uh, horrible caves, uh, treacherous falls. Uh, canyons, forests, we've only got a few people to do, so we, what we do is we work smart as well as hard to try and design these things. So we build the models very intricately. This is a small section of the world. And then uh, we use these prefabricated parts to build other prefabricated parts. And then Finally, once this is done, this makes up a component which can be snapped together in our level editor to make entire cities. It's like having the most awesome Lego toy you could possibly imagine. The game is running in real time all the time, so I got arranged with Steve, for instance, to meet him at five o'clock at, at this particular establishment. Uh, it's, it's a real time thing, like you can meet me there at five o'clock and arrange for a whole bunch of people to be there. One of the biggest cues uh, in a social game is facial expression. So the difference between raising an eyebrow uh, or changing the sides of the eyes when you smile can have dramatic implications. So with this particular technology, we're focusing on uh, a new advanced type of uh, facial animation, which isn't really used in games due, due to the, the cost of it um, to date. But uh, we found it very, very flexible. Characters in the interactive Citizen Zero world can also help each other out. This physical contact adds an extra level of complexity for the animators. For a game, this hasn't been done before, so this is a new thing to do. So one character will be able to ask another character to give him a lift up. They don't really want it to look real, they want it to look cool. Because I took some videos of the boys at work doing a similar move, but they didn't look quite as fluid. In a fully interactive game, virtual characters will have to talk to each other. In theory, this will all be made possible by the latest technology. These are the little wonderful devices that are going to revolutionise the world. Basically, they look pretty simple and tacky, but basically it's a microphone and a headpiece. With that, um, plugged into your controller, effectively. So this is how they function. Effectively, what you're able to do is you're able to both play the game and talk at the same time. Uh, so you'll be able to join in in a game with a controller, shoot various things, talk to your buddies and not use a keyboard, which is a much more natural way of doing things. So we think it's pretty cool. The launch date for the new game is drawing closer. If they can deliver, the potential rewards are staggering. It's quite an overwhelming thing the first time you get it. Yeah. But with plenty of zealous competitors, Microforte could still be dumped by Seattle at any time. For every established team, there's, there's always hungry young teams coming out willing to work 100 hour weeks for almost no money in order to get a foothold in the industry. They're quite in their own right to cancel your project and just move on with the next developer. So they're the top four or five uh, publishers really are you know, <laughs> controlling the purse strings of most of the small developers. It's the eve of the trip to Korea, and the Australian gamers Calgo, Megahertz and Venom meet in their other world to prepare for combat. <laughs> Alias has to be unique, and I think most of us have unique names. But there are people that choose names that are like Dark, Assassin, and you know, the like Venom. That's like a name that everyone chooses. Like, whoa, it's a cool name. Cut the hell off. How many Venoms are there? I don't know, I made three Venoms change their name because it was my name. I've been Calgo for ages, so I guess it just came to me though. <laughs> the first name is Michael, last name is Zillia, so I sort of just put them together, M, H, A, Z. I probably flogged you know, it off someone. You know what sounds for Megahertz? Games. 
a new emerging culture and communication medium that reach beyond simple play and transcend borders and generations. Beyond the world's game, cyber warriors are descending on Korea. Games, a cyber festival promoting world harmony is unfolding. Korea is the epicenter of world gaming. Most young Koreans now choose to escape from the pressure of high-density city life into the fantasy world of online games. It's a local obsession. There are 40,000 internet gaming cafes. One game alone, Lineage, is played by more than 2 million Koreans. <laughs> For the newly arrived young Australians, Korea proves even stranger than the cyber world. Translator. <laughs> Isn't that big? Yum yum. <laughs> this is only the second world cyber games, but they've already attracted 500 international gamers. The battles have begun at the Expo Science Park in Daejeon. I just wanted to let all the players know that the matches will commence at 10.30, so if you could please get to, uh, to your computers and make sure all your setup is finished. Look to your left. After two days, it's the end of the first round, and the Australians have already beaten Bulgaria, Taiwan and South Africa. Watch out middle, Mike, as well. To get through to the next round, they need to win or draw against undefeated Germany. Going good now. At the moment they're winning by one round. And it's looking to be a, this is the last round of the match now. If they win this they'll win 7-5. Yeah, yeah, but we're both, everyone It's else. a draw, but that's enough. Yeah, we're going three. through, it's fine. We're oh, yeah? going through, don't worry about it. Yeah, good. Don't worry about it, yeah. It's all right. The basic plan mm -hmm. is we do our run through on the 8th. Yes. Um, but we're allowed, to, we're allowed to push until the 11th. That's kind of them. Yep. Uh, we're probably going to run out of time as well, because we've already had to cut a day off this because of bug stuff. At the moment, John is the only one fixing bugs. The tension is rising at Microforte. They have only days to find the glitches in their program. It would normally take months. Incoming, shoot him. What's coming out of your TV speakers? Well, there's, there's some like voice stuff coming out of the TV speakers. When you talk, uh, Simon. That's not how it works. Like Simon Hayes is the software guru. If this game doesn't work, it's his problem. Yeah, I always take it into headphones because I'll play later at night. Uh, oh, is there someone up there? That is terrible. <laughs> so, there's no difference between them. Um, we need to animate the character so he gets on correctly. And when we do it at the moment, there's, he gets on a bit of an angle as you might be able to see, um, and yeah, we kind of like him to get on smoothly. That's uh, too much fun. Oh. oh look, you're still breathing even though you're dead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> hey John? Yes? Uh, you still breathe when you're dead? There appear to be even more problems than anticipated. Uh. A failure at the press launch could be fatal. So, except for the edge ones, Oh, this is going to be much more difficult. Much different. Uh, that's, I mean, that's my biggest fear, I guess. Oh, you know, the game is up there on stage, yeah. and then you, know, you get to the big boss creature, and he's totally silent. And it's like, no, it's, you know, it really shouldn't be happening, but there's nothing you can do. Hello, Robbie. 12,000 kilometres away, Microsoft oh, are still sounding positive. Um, well, I guess a lot of the weather stuff is already in there, so we can still roll, roll in storms and have them start to rain and that kind of stuff. Um, as we've done in previous demos. And the rain will still, when it falls on the ponds, will still cause the ripples and those nice effects. Um, and the sun flares and things through the trees, we just need to populate a couple of trees <laughs> out the front. 
um, so you can see some of those things. The rain still takes two minutes to arrive, so we have to schedule it well. And the rain still rains indoors, so we have to make sure we're out of doors when it starts to rain. Um, let's not do the storm because I don't want a chance raining indoors. Yep, sounds good. Good. Okay. Besides, it'll probably be raining outside anyway. Seattle, so people won't really want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone here is really excited about it. I've had like three or four people come by my office today wanting to check it out. So, good stuff. That's good. Yeah, well, the building up there should be a lot better. And we've had really good feedback so far, but it is a little bit hard to tell. Um, you know, the whole American enthusiasm thing is always a little bit... You do need to put that through the, the Australian filter of cynicism and go, are they really happy with it or are they just saying so? Back in Korea, i are awaking to the knockout phase of the tournament. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Come on, happy birthday, move out. Today's their toughest day yet. Their opponents are competition favourites, the Americans. If we lose, we're out. So it's do or die. <laughs> Goes out. Drop the bomb mass. Go back, man. High. The Americans have comprehensively ended the Australian dream. Okay, guys, you did your best. All right. Next year. You're right, guys. Yeah. Hey, it's just a game. You did your best. All right. Okay. You are a young team. You have time to make training and everything. All right. Yeah. Come on. We're a new team, one more for a day. We stick together, we should have a better chance next year. Good world, no? Back in Sydney, Microforte have also been dealt a blow by the Americans. You guys, we're going to have a, meet, have a meeting about announcement stuff. Uh, basically, this morning we were in our conference call with Microsoft. Basically, said that they uh, weren't going to go ahead with the press um, demo. The reason for that is they actually changed the the event, the Xbox Live event, to be a non-press event. Wasn't that the point of the this demo that we were the only press event there? That's the irony. That's the <laughs> irony. Like the, one thing, the thing which is so great about it means it's not going to happen anymore. So I know it's a bit of a well, I don't know. When I heard the news, I was a little bit <coughs> disappointed. It's a bitter blow for the team. They've lost their World Showcase launch. But they're still in the game. Um, you can't get too worried about these sort of things because yeah, we're still doing a project. It's not like it's been canned or anything. I mean, that's when you get upset. You know, if they actually say, sorry, we've decided that we've found a better product or it doesn't fit our market, whatever, you know, there's, there's always a hundred reasons for, you know, a project to be dropped. I guess you just hope that it's going to be, overall, you know, end result, it's going to be, um, you know, the quality thing you're aiming for. But it's a bit tough along the way sometimes. <laughs> It's the final day of the World Cyber Games, and not everything has gone America's way. Host nation Korea has won the most medals, and the big star of the day is local hero Yeowon Lim. He's a national celebrity and treated like a pop star. It's a glimpse of a potential future, a virtual world with a pot of gold for the winners where talented young Australians are already staking their claims. I enjoyed it. Um, 
but I couldn't live here much longer. <laughs> I want to go home. My, my bed and grandma's cooking and grandma's schnitzel. Yeah, chicken schnitzel. Can't wait. Yeah, it could get bigger. And all these countries we've never, like, we never fought, played computer games. No, because, yeah, what is it? Kazakhstan had computers. And they didn't think so. we played computer games. Yeah. They fought, like, we played with the kangaroos. Yeah, and yeah. The koalas and stuff. Yeah, our koala army. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's big and it could get bigger. Last year was only 38 nations, and now it's 45. I didn't need to aim when I got the frags, all right? Yeah. If, still, if Billy had planted still. that bomb, and you, you know, went you, with you, him. You get, I didn't even have the bomb. What are you talking you had the bomb. Oh, you yes, had the bomb. I mean, oh, that's right. You, you had the bomb. If you went with him and you planted the bomb, that would have been over. What are you talking about? Good game. What, what, what round? That what round where you went back and tried to get the gun. <laughs> tried to get <laughs> Yeah. If you came out, he still had a pistol. He yeah. didn't have a pistol. One of them had a gun. One of them had a yeah, pistol. Yeah, I killed the guy on the, the ramp. On the ramp. You could only see his head. What, what, where did you die from when you went to find him? A pistol, right? I can't remember. No, it's a pistol. He, he, didn't want, he didn't go and find the guy. He went to get the bomb when you were dropped. He was obviously holding the bomb there. Where else would he go? Yeah, huh? you had the bomb. You had the bomb at the start. Like, yeah. You, you Sean admitted to you up. screwed up that round. If, watch the Half-Life TV. If I ran after Billy, I still would have got shot in the back. In back. fact, that's what we're going to do now. We're going to go back and watch the Half-Life TV. Watch it. Yeah. Play oh, Warcraft. I'm going to go to the city tonight. I'm no. Play Warcraft. We're going to watch the Half-Life TV. Right.